Hello guys, welcome back. This is the 29th video in the 30 days of Databricks series. And now as we are approaching towards the end, this is the second last uh, video. I want to show you how you can mount the cloud storage in Databricks. So for this example, as I was creating the free trial from AWS, I'm going to show you how you can mount the S3 bucket into your Databricks notebook and, and then read some data out of it. Also, how you can read the data from S3 without mounting using the AWS keys. There are many steps here. First, I will show you how you, from where you can create the SS keys and how you can upload the data into S3 bucket. And also, you need to create the secrets using the Databricks secrets. And finally, how you can use those keys using the Databricks secrets in Databricks notebook. Let's get started. Okay, first thing first, what you need to do is you need to have the AWS account. I hope you already have because we, when I create the free trial, I showed you how you can connect it. This is my AWS account. To get the SS keys, you can go to your name on top here. You can click this one and there is the security credentials. When you click the security credentials, it will take you to this page and you will see here the name called SS keys. From here, you can create your SS keys. I have already created, as you can see here, this is my SS key ID and there is the secret key also. After you get this, you need to create the Databricks secrets. That is the next step. I have already explained in depth how to deal with the Databricks secrets in my earlier video. Refer to that. What I'm doing here is I created a scope first called AWS and inside that AWS uh, scope, two keys. SS key and secret key. I have my secrets keys uh, stored in Databricks secrets. And the next thing is how you can upload the data. For that, you can go to Amazon S3 bucket in the AWS account, create a bucket. I have given the bucket name movie data set YouTube. So the bucket name must be unique. You will know when you create that. And then inside this, I have uploaded the CSV file called movie statistics data set. So there were many steps, but if you follow step by step, I hope you get the idea. Now let's go to Databricks UI. So this is the Databricks UI and I have written an AWS S3 connection notebook here. I will provide this notebook in the description of this video. So you don't need to just copy from here. You can just copy from that. So, or you can just try along with me. That's your choice. First thing first, what we need to do is before this also, I want to show you one thing. If you go to this main Databricks uh, page, if you have if you have just this onboarding still on here, it will show you connect to AWS S3 or upload the data. So I haven't skipped onboarding because sometimes it is helpful. From here also, you can connect to Amazon S3. This is one way if you are if you prefer clicking here and there, you can go through this path also. Yeah, you can just go manual or AWS quick start. If you go to next, it will ask for the bucket name and you need to provide the personal SS token and you can go this path also. But clicking here and there takes time. But good idea is to learn from terminal and using the Databricks secrets is quite convenient way. Now here is the thing. How to get the secrets is these two lines of things. I have explained this before also, as I said in the Databricks secrets video, but SS key, you can use the dbutils dot secrets dot get and then you can have the scope which I created called AWS and the key is SS key and the, another key is the secret key. So I'm showing you first SS the S3 data directly without mounting the S3 bucket. Let's say that you don't want to mount and directly connect from the S3 bucket, right? And these are the two things that you need to provide. And by the way, if you want to know in depth documentations about this, there is a uh, documentation provided by Databricks. I just take from here. You can just go through this for in depth things. You can even do with the IAM roles or something. I'm just using the secret key and the SS key. There are many things here. If you want more secured way, or I think it's already secured using the Databricks secrets, but if you want to use other ways also, you can go and follow this documentation. After this, what you can do is now use Spark, read CSV, and then you can provide this S3 URI. From where I get this URI, now if I go to the dataset, as you can see here, if I click this, 
it is here written copy s3 url you can just copy this s3 copied and you go back to your databricks notebook and just paste here that's what you need to do there is nothing else difference your keys instead of mine and this you can just use as it is and this one also only you need to replace this s3 uri in for schema true header i have the header so it's true and if i just display this it will display the df but you need to be careful we haven't attached the cluster you need to go here and attach the cluster now the cluster is being attached meaning that it is this notebook is powered by some uh, machine whatever you want to call it and now if i run this shift enter as i said you before also it is going to fetch the secret key and the ss key from databricks secrets and then it is going to read the data and we have the data this is how quickly you can uh, read the data from s3 if you have configured things correctly so this is one way of doing what is the next way of doing is mounting the s3 bucket in databricks meaning that you have your data you have your s3 bucket and the data in s3 you want to mount that into databricks and then read from that databricks mounted point and you can unmount that if you don't want anymore i will show you how to unmount that also for that also this is the same thing which i explained you before we get the ss keys and the secret key and encoded secret key just this is just one layer security provided by databricks you can just replace the secret key with something else you can just follow this no need extra explanation here and then there is aws bucket name so you need to provide your bucket name for me it was movie data set youtube right if i go here there is movie data set youtube that is the name of the bucket and then mount name you provide any name here i am giving s3 data and then dbutils.fs.mount I, I want to mount this particular bucket into this particular location in databricks and i want to display that this is what it is doing here if i run shift enter then it will show me the mounted location so i said here dbutils.fs.ls and by the way if you don't know what is dbutils and it stops there is already a video being created about dbutils and dbfs also you can go and watch to get the high level or in-depth idea what is dbfs what is dbutils and what you can achieve out of it here it shows me the location instead of querying the data from s3 bucket now i can query the data from the mounted point so this is the mounted location what i can do now is okay this is the file location i just copied this from here this is exactly the same and i said here dv.spark.readcsv now it's the similar to here but spark.readcsv instead of s3 location i am providing now where it is here I am providing the file location that is inside the databricks and then in for schema true header true and if i now display df it will display the same data which is mounted in the databricks i hope you get the idea yeah the answer is the same because the data is the same right now let's say that you want to unmount that you can just run dbutils.fs dot unmount and provide the location and i will just say unmount this so what happens if you unmount if you were reading directly from the s3 bucket you would read as it is but now if you unmount that you cannot read this particular data again from this location so the command that we run here this one will throw us the error because it is not on it is not mounted now so once it is unmounted it says here okay this location is unmounted true now if i run this shift enter it will throw me the error okay path not found path does not exist because we just unmounted that path this is how it works i hope you get the idea main idea here was to assess the s3 data directly without mounting the s3 bucket and by mounting the s3 bucket and we unmount that and if we read the data then we don't get that particular thing I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching and see you in the next last video of this series.